Okay, good afternoon. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is just to give a, a brief overview of uh, Project Blueprint, the methodology behind it, which has been pioneered with ESPN and is now being continued with SIM. Um, <coughs> go through the measurement principles that are in play and sort of lay out what is coming next. So very briefly, everyone understands this problem, but fundamentally, the consumers are ahead of measurement. They're way ahead of us. And as we try to catch up, we're dealing with a moving target. Um, it boils down into roughly three fundamental changes that we're grappling with as an industry. Trying to deal with device proliferation. This challenges metering, uh, challenges delivery, challenges measurement. Um, as smartphones, as we all woke up to smartphones and the challenges measuring there, tablets emerge. Uh, and with the emergence of TV connected devices uh, and other wearable components, this is going to keep happening. We're also dealing with the fragmentation of video and high quality video content. Um, and it is not just a matter of distributing through different digital channels or hitting different devices. Uh, the mechanisms by which consumers are accessing high value video content has fundamentally changed. Uh, and the evolution of advertising. Um, the nature of how people are buying and selling ads uh, and the collision of digital and broadcast uh, and the evolution of people wanting to pace their media, adjust their media, optimize their media are all influencing the decisions that are being made by both buyers and sellers. <coughs> so what's a big deal? Um, clearly we all feel this uh, from certain angles, but as a measurement company, the main challenge is how do I deliver the things that matter to the buyers, the sellers, people trying to figure out what it means to catch up to the consumer. Uh, for buyers, you have to understand true reach, true frequency. Um, and without that, you can't make the quality of decisions that you've been able to make on individual platforms in the past. Uh, we have to have a way to tie all of this through to performance metrics. And I think Aaron made that very clear that there's lots of work going on, but in order to do it properly, you have to put it all together. <coughs> and we have to actively manage waste. And we don't know which portions are wasted. We don't know if it's being wasted in the units that are being bought or the money that's being spent to get those units. Um, but the metrics have to be available for people to actually understand how they're optimizing their spend. Sellers, um, clearly you have to be able to monetize uh, all of the distribution channels. You are doing right by your clients, by your customers, by your consumers. Um, and ultimately you need the models to be able to monetize the way that your consumers are reacting to your product. Um, and packaging, price, and selling, it all needs to be on a common footing. Um, <coughs> from a strategy perspective, I think there uh, are a lot of questions that cannot be answered today because all of the measurement is in silos. Uh, and the interplay between consumers moving from device to device makes it very challenging to understand what the mix of consumption means for how you should program and reach your client. Okay, so measurement. The measurement challenge uh, in this space is death by Venn diagram. The overlapping cells are blinding. And as you get into this, there's actually 32 discrete cells that can exist for any media. And that's just one brand. Let's say you're doing a media plan and you want to see how this combines across multiple places where you may want to buy. Um, it is a very challenging equation and it is very complex. The measurement challenge is to take this complexity and simplify it into a set of tools that can deliver screen time. <coughs> so uh, Sim laid this out initially and <coughs> I said, okay, we have assets. We know how to use them. We know what they are, but ultimately, Panels are great at doing individual person level measurement, um, but are challenged when you get to a scale where you need to take every single measurement and split it into 32 parts. And that's before you break it by age and gender. <coughs> census is great too, but it's not person level. You can get census based measurement from a set top box or from a web beacon and that's fantastic, but it's only an event. It doesn't have a person behind it. So the challenge was how do we put it all together? we need to be able to leverage both because either one standalone can't do the job. <coughs> so after some early work with SIM, ESPN, um, 
basically brought everybody together and said, I believe that we can do this. There is a blueprint for making all of this work. Um, and I'm just going to go through high level of how it all fits together. Um, so the first part is embrace multiple data sources. Um, and no individual data source is going to bring it all together, but we can leverage census and we can level panel assets uh, to get the best of both worlds. So this put together assets from both Comscore and uh, Arbitron at the time. Uh, <coughs> and we're able to get a view of five platforms, yes, overlapping data sets, overlapping data sources, but we were able to get it all in the measurement frame. <coughs> the second piece is, in this philosophy, is use the best data source available to do the measurement. So if I have a million person panel to measure digital, I shouldn't try to do that with a 2,000 person overlap sample. It's not that that sample is not useful, it's that I have a good way to measure digital. What I don't have a good way to do is measure how digital and TV overlap. So you need to create different data sets to understand the intersection of these large circles that are independently measured quite well. And the third part is um, leverage existing standards. If we try to create new standards for all five platforms at the same time and overlaps, it's going to be very challenging to gain adoption. So <coughs> in this effort, we leverage the existing radio standard. We leverage the existing digital standards uh, in media metrics, mobile metrics, and we uh, needed to create a new television source, uh, which was based as a combination of both census level set-top box data uh, and person level portable person meter data from Nielsen Audio. <coughs> now, in phase one, we had uh, the challenge of figuring out how to render this. And fundamental in the, the work to date is that we cannot ignore the complexity. We have to work through the complexity, we have to embrace it and come up with ways to understand how to manage it and boil it down to a simple metric. Um, and the way that the system works, you can't possibly pre-calculate all possible combinations of all possible things. Um, so the system is set up to surface that information however you want to configure it. So if I want to configure one media uh, unit across multiple platforms, you can do that. If you want to mix and match across, you can do that too. Um, but I'm calculating this more or less on the fly as these things are configured. Um, and then ultimately, as we configure media units across different platforms and different times, um, we're able to generate output that will show all of the various combinations. Now, ultimately, I don't know if any planner or seller will ever use the data quite this way, but it's important to be able to look at it to understand if it's working and to understand the nature of your multi-platform overlap set. And what does that mean for you as you plan your content strategy to attract customers? Um, so the way the system works today is, is very transparent and there's an enormous amount of numbers that come out across five media and 32 discrete cells. Um, but that is what we did in phase one. In phase two, we seek to extend this outside of the ESPN framework. ESPN had a couple of things that made things a little simpler. Um, time shifting was not a huge focus due to the focus on live events. Um, we didn't deal with campaigns um, and we didn't have to really worry about the kids issue uh, and how we actually do quality measurement below the age of 13 uh, in a world like this. And <coughs> phase two, we tackle that. We broaden the scope of people that uh, are engaged in this process and that we're going to show all of the complexity to. Uh, we're tackling campaigns and we're extending measurement to kids. And that's the work that we're involved in right now. So this is by its nature a complicated exercise. And for those of you who are participating, uh, I really appreciate that because there are going to be lots of questions uh, and the process of answering them is what sets us up to do what you really want. Um, which is ultimately to get to a simple total view of media. And it needs to cover the various platforms and it needs to deal with the complexity, but that needs to be behind the scenes. Um, and phase two will help us get to get through the process of building up the trust needed in the methodology so that we can put that complexity behind the scenes and deliver the simple metric. 
So this is what we're working on and hopefully as we work through phase two and we start to bring these products to market, more and more of you can be involved and give us, uh, give us the direction that we need to get it right. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Artie, who's actually got uh, some results.